guys, what's up? It's Dusty Tucker. I apologize, I have not been around for a little while. I haven't had time to make a video. I've been too busy with work, um, home improvements, and other things. It's been too cold. I haven't been able to do any shooting videos in a while, so yeah, I apologize. It's just been too hectic around here. I haven't been able to get to a video for, for a couple months, but I'm bringing you guys one today. This one is going to be on a open top uh, cartridge conversion u birdie uh, remodel I guess it would be after the 1871 uh, conversion so it'd be like the 1851 Navy which is a percussion gun converted into a cartridge gun sort of thing so that's what this uh, personal opinion re review is going to be on today and this cartridge conversion before I get to it it's it's empty but yeah the uh, I'll get more into the conversion process in a minute but this is more so gonna be a review on this guy now I've had this one um, for closer to a year now uh, I have shot it quite a bit this this one is chambered in 45 Schofield I think I've mentioned that in a different video, but this is a 45 Schofield. It is a little bit shorter than a 45 Colt, and this one will not chamber a 45 Colt. It'll stick. It'll stick out of the cylinder just a little bit. So this one has to be Schofield, and I have to make my own bullets because they don't. I'm pretty sure I can't find anyone who. Uh, you can't just go to like Walmart and buy Schofield off the shelves or. Yeah, you could probably order them online. I know I know that. Some of you guys are going to comment that I can order it online. But I'd prefer to make my own. It's a lot cheaper than $60, $70 a box. I can make them for probably like 3 or $4 a box. So why would I order them online? But yeah, um, this one's 45 Schofield. Um, it's an 8-inch barrel. So it's a quite, quite of a long barrel on this girl. And uh, you can see the comparisons between where the conversion came from but once again I'll get to that in a minute this is more so uh, my review on it of what I have to say about it so far and it's got a the hammer it's got the firing pin on the hammer it's not a transfer barred model um, I haven't really got any complaints about it the only thing I would say is that this wedge pin here you have to be careful of where you place that, especially when you're shooting black powder, um, because there's no there's no uh, cylinder play in this one. But let's say you put the you you finish cleaning your revolver and you put this pin in a little too far, and it may seem like okay, well it's it's cocking and spinning fine right now, but as soon as you get out to the range and you fire six shots or five shots with it, it gets really hard to cock. And that's because you put the base pin in too far. So just come back a hair. Come back. And actually what I like to do is there's a little stopper screw. Uh, there's a little stopper screw right here. What I like to do is uh, um, make sure that that's uh, tight. And then come back and back, back the pin out until the screw stops it from coming out. And I like to leave it just just enough there might there might be a little bit of play in here but it's gonna have room for all that extra fouling that you're gonna get so you're gonna be able to shoot it a lot more with ease than you are it's not gonna be so gummed up after five or six rounds so that's it took me a little but that's just trial and error right that's not really the guns problem that's human error that's just what you have to that's what you have to do on your own time sort of thing it's not but yeah, no, and then the, you can see the, the 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 ejector rod is kind of different. It's not just on the side. You don't just push it back. You have to kind of spin it around like this to get it to go out. It doesn't just stay out like that. It, it kind of wraps around, and then you have to eject that way. And then the, how it lines up is kind of it's kind of hard to get used to it out of what for a while. But you have to kind of. You can't have it like down here in the middle. It has to be kind of closer to the top uh, of the loading gate 
to be able to eject the rounds properly. You see how it sticks really close to the top of the, it's not in the middle, it's kind of higher up. It's just, that's how the conversions were done because it was bolted on after the fact. So it would have been, they got rid of the ramrod and they put a mounted ejector on the frame. So it's kind of interesting how they kept that. I, I really like that they kept that. Um, I've already had to replace a shear spring. Like I pretty much have to replace all of the shear springs on my single action revolvers. They just, they, they go. It's just a common part that wears. They have to be replaced every, I'm not sure what the, what the length is on that, but they have to be replaced every so often. I've only had to replace one on here so far. And my Navy, I think I've had to replace just one as well. Same with my Cattlemen's. Just one on all of them so far, but I've had them for a while. So um, the original projectile that this would have shot would have been through here, and it would have been a 44 caliber round ball. And then with the conversion, obviously it's a cartridge now, so it's a 45 caliber Schofield cartridge instead. But uh, it's a, it, it shoots good. I haven't had very much uh, issues with it at all, other than just that wedge pin figuring out the 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 sweet spot I'd like to call it where where it, where uh, you would like to have it sit properly so that you can get nice easy access with that hammer every time you want to shoot um, the sight picture is the same as the Navy it's on the back of the hammer and on the front of the barrel for your sights it's I find this sight a little bit harder to aim it's it's a really tight aim compared to the Navy the Navy's got more of a groove on the hammer, as you can see there. You got a little more room to play with compared to this guy. It's got a smaller cut in the back of the hammer. So it's a little less of a sight picture, if you want to call it a sight picture. But um, I still like it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Um, this I, I bought this from a gentleman in Saskatoon and he's had it for a while too and he likes it he liked it when I bought it off him he just wanted something different so um, yeah no, I have really no complaints about this it's got some bluing starting to come off but I, I honestly don't know how old this is the serial number starts with an X so it's kind of a older model but uh, I, what, what I really like about this one is that it actually sta uh, you probably can't see that it's stamped under here it's actually stamped 45 Schofield I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see that but it's underneath the the ejector rod it's kind of cool um, I like what I like about this is that the stamps aren't um, you know it's not it's not like the Pieta where it says black powder only stamped on the side of the barrel which I find is kind of ugly but no, nope, you got nothing. They uh, they kept the stampings legitimate, like how they would have. The only stamp on the on the on this barrel, on the top is uh, A Birdie in Italy. That's all it says on the top. The other stamp is underneath of the. It's kind of hidden out of the way, and it says Schofield. And I kind of like that. It's not stamped with a bunch of. Mm -hmm dummy proof marks on the barrel all over the place it's it kept, they kept it neat and clean that's one thing I really like about it all the serial numbers are where they would normally be in like the old Colts you know on all three parts of the revolver it's a good shooter um, the cleaning process uh, isn't too bad not compared to not compared to this guy obviously percussions always a little more to clean um, yeah, no, it's overall, it's a, it's a really good shooter. If you have a chance to get one of these revolvers, I would seriously consider it. Um, I would tell you guys to go out and get one. They're, they're really nice. The fit and finish on this older model is actually really good. Even when it comes to the wood grips, it's more flush with the frame. It doesn't kind of stick out like crazy, kind of like, um, kind of like the 1851 does. You can see how much the wood sticks out from the frame here it's a big difference 
but I think they try to do that because eventually your wood shrinks over time and then eventually it would match the uh, the frame there but for this one they did a really good job it kind of it's basically flush with the metal I, I they did a really good job I'm not sure if the new ones are like this too but for this older model it's it's a beautiful revolver like I have no no complaints about this girl it's a it's a nice shooter it's especially if you're shooting black powder cartridges which I love to do but of course if you're gonna shoot black powder cartridges you need the right projectiles so before I get too out of out of hand here that's what a black powder uh, projectile should look like with the soft lube and a massive lube groove you want that like hydraulic seal as it's going down the barrel and uh, yeah no uh, that's pretty much all I really have to say about this I don't really have any concerns or issues with it um, one thing I will say is that these base pin or these sorry these base screws um, where am I here underneath the trigger guard let's see right here these these two screws I've noticed I out of all of my u birdie revolvers even this guy the Navy these two screws underneath underneath the trigger guard there they are all the same for the ones I have so far the two cattlemen's the Navy the 71 the, the conversion um, all of them I I've, I've taken because I have lost a few of them you have to remember to tighten them after uh, every time you shoot these things go over and tighten all of these screws because sometimes they will back out after uh, vibration and they'll get loose and they might fall off so you have to be careful but yeah they are all uh, interchangeable with each other as far as I'm concerned um, maybe you have a model that they don't but as, as far as I know I could take one of these screws out and it would screw right into here no problem as you can see I'm missing one I have to order one um, when I had purchased a uh, revolver from a guy he actually didn't have any they they uh, both of these screws were missing and I could tell because the, the metaling here was starting there was a gap when I was cleaning it and I was like why is that not tight and that was because when he was shooting these screws must have slowly fell out well when you're shooting you don't notice that because it's underneath the gun you're not going to think about that and then maybe after a loud bang and recoil it shoots out and then you'll never find it it's in the grass or it's in the sand and those screws you have to make sure that you tighten those after every time you shoot I know I kind of repeat myself a lot but embed it into your brain anyways um, that, I think that's pretty much all I have on this video before I leave I'm gonna change the camera angle above and show you show you how the conversion was sort of done s okay so we have a top view here and you can see right away some of the differences that they would have done so they would have taken the cylinder of the 1851 they would have cut off where the backs of the nipples would have gone so that you could insert a cartridge a full cartridge in there and you can see it kind of looks like they would have where they would have cut it if this was an actual cartridge conversion like if it was actually done but this was made and then they would have added a big back plate here with a loading gate attached to it so you could easily access your uh, your cartridges and you can see where the frame would have been and then they inserted this big chunk of metal here as like a backstop for the bullet and then they would have added a little bit of a bigger forcing cone on it to make up for the smaller cylinder and yeah that's pretty much why this model is a cartridge conversion and, and not just a uh, a Calamin or something else like that but that's pretty much all I have for this video I hope you liked it and uh, we'll see you next time Dusty Tucker signing out